What's up, everybody, and welcome back to What the Fun. Today we are talking about Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, continuing our Lord of the Rings content all the way up until The Rings of Power, releasing on Amazon Prime later in a couple weeks, I believe. So, very excited. Yeah. And I am joined by none other than my co-host, Joe. How you doing today, Joe? I am doing fantastic today. That's good. Glad. Um, so very sorry for the delay on this episode. If you're listening to us here, we had a little snafu with our original recording of our review here. So my microphone was muted for about 12, 15 minutes and a little while. It was uh, it was pretty bad, so um, we just decided to scrap the entire episode and re-record it. Unfortunately, Justin's not going to be able to join us for this particular recording, but we will make sure to get his review of Fellowship of the Ring in the uh, later on in the episode here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So with that being said, welcome to What the Fun. Uh, we um, are looking forward to just continuing to do this Lord of the Rings content. So make sure you stay tuned. And as always, if you're listening to us on a podcatcher of choice, please leave us a review. If you're on Spotify, use the mobile app in order to leave a five-star review. Um, and if you're on Apple iTunes, it would be greatly appreciated if you typed a little review out to us. We would love to read it on the show um, and just let us know how we're doing. As always, if you're on YouTube watching us, we are on the road to 100 subscribers, so please make sure to hit that subscription button. It's very free. It's one click away. It's about two seconds of your time and it really goes a long way in helping us get to that 100 mark just so that we could say youtube.com slash what the fun pod that's really what we want to get to not trying to be youtubers just want that 100 subscribers it'd be so <laughs> nice to be able to say hey guys find us on youtube at what the fun yeah instead mm -hmm. of like click the link and and it's got numbers and letters yeah, and yeah. they're capitalized and lowercase and Exactly. We don't want that. Um, it would be so much simpler. So please, would love uh, if you guys would do that. Um, yeah, we are going to be releasing this hopefully on a Wednesday that you are hearing this, and then the following Friday, uh, so two days from now, you should be hearing our Two Towers review. Um, and speaking of our future reviews, we are planning on doing a giveaway. Yes, a giveaway for none other than the 4K digital set of the extended editions for the original trilogy, Lords of the Lord of the Rings original trilogy. So, with that being said, stay tuned for all the details on that. More details will be coming in the Two Towers episode, and then the giveaway will be attached specifically to our Return of the King episode. So make sure you're staying tuned uh, for all of those things coming up here in the future. We're really excited to do this giveaway. Uh, me, Joe, and Justin, are we love this series, and we just kind of want to give back to the community that has been listening and supporting our stuff. So... Absolutely. Joe, that's all it for housekeeping. Um, today we get into the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, once again, uh, this is the sequel trilogy to, you know, The Hobbit, uh, you know, that original great trilogy. Yeah, kind of. From Peter Jackson. Um, kind of a know. sequel. Yeah, I'll, I'll go I mean, along with it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I, the Hobbit did come first. Yeah, yeah, it did. Ish. Yeah, it was... Yeah, clearly the superior uh, film trilogy as well. So uh, this is going to nope. be a slog to kind of get through, but we're going to do mm -hmm. it. Um, anyway, uh, Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, directed by Peter Jackson. Um, hey, that's the same guy from the Hobbit trilogy. Kind of makes right? sense. Yeah. Um, and Joe, again, done this bit before, but it, it's still so funny. I, I'm not sure you're aware, but this is based on the book The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Wait, there's books that go along with these yeah. films? Yes. Yeah. Very Get much so. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It stars Elijah Wood as Frodo, Ian McKellen as Gandalf, making his uh, reappearance here, you know, after that stellar original trilogy. Um, yep. Liv Tyler as Awen, uh, Vigo Mortensen, that is uh, Strider, Sean Astin uh, as Samwise Gamgee, and Mikey. Gotcha. Yeah, Mikey, Mikey from the Goonies. Yep, of course. And uh, you, you're you going to have some high praise for Samwise Gamgee here in a bit. So, um, All right, we got Orlando Bloom making his return as Legolas. Uh, Hugo Weaving as, uh, what's Lord his face? Elrond. Lord Elrond. <laughs> there we go. Not Agent Smith. <laughs> Christopher Lee um, as uh, Sauron. Um, and then Andy Serkis um, as... 
Gollum. Now, we'll get into it. We don't see Gollum too much during the Fellowship of the Ring, but um, certainly when the Two Towers comes around, we'll be we'll be speaking about him a little bit further. So, um, music obviously yeah, by he screams Howard a little Shore. bit in the first one. Eh, just a little bit. Yeah, we got we got a little bit of him. Hey. Uh, music by Howard Shore, uh, released on December 19th, 2001. And yeah, I mean, this is Howard Shore just continues his streak after the Hobbit trilogy, you know, just really makes a fantastic uh, film score. Very excited about that. 208 minutes for the extended edition. That, If you're doing the math at home, that's three hours and 30 minutes about. Oh, it's, it's good. It's, it's, a, it's a good amount of time. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Um, budget of $93 million and box office of $897.7 million. That's pretty good. That's like, what, you know, 10 times as much yeah. as they... Uh, spent on yeah, it so. just about pretty good um so joe uh patent pending spoiler free review from you my friend Ooh, all right so we have lord of the rings the fellowship of the ring now this yep. apparently is a mm-hmm. book uh so if you haven't seen the movie read the book uh and then watch the movie if you watch this movie you may find that it's a, a story about a great adventure Mm-hmm. taken by none other than a fellowship of people what do they do we don't know yet but they're going on an adventure <laughs> and if you've seen the hobbit or listened to our reviews you know that's a thing that hobbits do slash don't do yep. but they definitely do if they're baggins uh so join us as we go on an adventure with the fellowship <laughs> um yeah uh this is This movie is almost perfect for me. Um, You know, we'll talk about we'll talk about some things here, um, you know, that I may have disliked, but there's not a lot. Um, It's such a good movie. Um, This is such a good trilogy. I mean, to to kind of follow up what was, you know, just a standout trilogy with The Hobbit, um, you know, and coming out uh, into this new trilogy. Some high praise. And I know how we rated those movies. What? (laughs) <laughs> You're yeah. kidding. Okay. Um, maybe the bit has gone on a little bit too long. Yeah, you're getting better Lord of the Rings here uh, when it comes to <laughs> this trilogy. Just stay tuned. Yeah. Um, we're super excited to just talk a little bit more about the plot. And so my spoiler for your view is it's good. It's very good. It's nigh on perfect. Um, and you could even talk just about the uh, score alone, um, let alone the performances. Like this, this movie's got it all. Um, the extended edition I watched, um, Joe, you, I think you watched the extended edition for our review here. Uh, yes, yeah, I've, I've, I own it. I've seen it all. It's not boring. Like, even though it is 330 minutes, like it, it just keeps going. You're on the edge of your seat. Like this three hours awesome, and 30 so. minutes, 208 minutes, what? 330 minutes would be a really long movie. He said 330 minutes. Did I that do, be, did I say that? Would that would be Holy so long. Schnikes. Yeah, that would be long. Um and so, uh let's get into the thick of it. It is none other than our spoiler review. If you have not seen Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, I I, I forgive you. Um but this is your official spoiler warning. Hey you. What, the? what are you doing? Who me? Do you want to be spoiled? No. Well then, stop it. Get some help. So you don't feel like this guy. Instead, let it be a surprise. Oh, I like surprises. So go watch the thing before you move on in the podcast, okay? Alrighty then. All right, that was your spoiler warning, Joe. Let's get into the plot here. In the second age of Middle-earth, the lords of elves, dwarves, and men are given rings of power. Hey, those rings of power are from the last trilogy. (laughs) There was a ring of power in that last one for sure. I mean, there were... I don't know about multiples. There were nine... There were the nine uh, humans, the the race, in the Uh, the last one. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Unbeknownst to them, the Dark Lord, Sauron, forges the One Ring in Mount Doom, instilling into it a great power of his, or a great part of his power, in order to dominate the other rings so he might conquer Middle Earth. A final alliance of men and elves battles Sauron's forces in Mordor. Isildur of 
Gondor severs Sauron's finger and the ring with it, thereby vanquishing Sauron and returning him to spirit form. With Sauron's first defeat, the Third Age of Middle-earth begins. Um, Joe, this this beginning is just it's just spot on like it is it is such a good start and a such a good tone setter for this particular yes. movie and the trilogy in general uh this backstory and uh you know there's i believe that it is um uh narrated over by none other than galadriel as well um from the it trilogy is. so joe uh, this intro what do you got uh i enjoyed it um, I think it was necessary because they're dropping us into a story 3,000 years old, essentially, uh, mm-hmm. when when we come into it, where we're so far removed from this incident that we have to know what happened way back when. Uh, so this is actually probably 100 years after, maybe even longer after the original rings were made, mm-hmm. um, and could be even longer. Uh, but... Sauron comes in and he's like, yo, we're going to give all these rings out, make everyone feel good. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get a ring, you get a ring, you get a ring. He's Oprah <laughs> up in here. Uh, everybody gets a ring. And then the rings imbue some some amount of power into the individuals who get them. Mm-hmm. But they also allow him to corrupt them because uh, he creates that one ring. And this is the story of what happens after he created that ring, because he's already got it. He's wearing it on his giant metal, you know, freaky uh, Freddy Krueger hand. <laughs> and uh, in this battle between elves and men, I didn't really see any dwarves. Which I don't is think kind dwarves. Of unfortunate, cause I, I mean, think it, it does. It does say dwarves. You know, get rings. I believe they get three. Um, they do. Yeah. And uh, uh, but it doesn't kind of seem like they're within this battle. Yeah, they're not really fighting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. elves, men against Sauron and his forces, so orcs and other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Isildur, yeah, gets in there. He's down and out. Boom. Sauron breaks his sword, and he grabs the shattered sword, you know, freaks out, and luckily cuts mm-hmm. off his finger with the ring. Uh, I don't know if it was skill much involved in that no, one. No, honestly, but you know I think what? it was quite luck. Um, he lucked out. The yeah. ring comes off. Sauron kind of boom explodes in this giant nuclear blast that knocks everyone Mm -hmm. over uh and doesn't hurt anyone which is kind of weird especially because isildur is what like two feet away from him i mean you think he'd be like blown to bits he's not who knows maybe there's just some like special i knocked your fingers off i got a little little protection um sort of a sort of a immunity um of sorts i like it kind of like when you kind of like when you come back yeah like kind of like when you come back in super smash bros you know after he's blinking yeah yeah he's blinking got it um so so anyway yeah cuts off the finger uh he collects the ring i know elrond because he's old as dirt literally uh is like <laughs> yo cast it into the fires of mount doom yeah, and, and he does like nah it's a trophy bro i'm gonna wear this around my he neck he does not so the and then he's super murdered yep the influence of the ring captures isildur who takes it for himself and is later killed by orcs the ring is lost in a river for 2500 years until it is found by none other than Gollum. Um, who owns it for over four and a half centuries. Uh, There is a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins who ends up coming into possession of the ring. Get out of here. What? Yeah. I feel like we talked about this recently. We did. We kind of did. It was in that original trilogy, you know, um... Yeah, uh, he does a does a little riddle battle with uh, none other than Gollum and kind of uh, wins the ring. And now it's in his... Yeah, I mean... More or less. Now it's in his possession, and 60 years later, Bilbo is celebrating his 111th birthday in the Shire, reuniting with his old friend, the wizard Gandalf the Grey. Um, so they definitely have some history, um, and Bilbo has some some special things going on for this particular birthday. Um, he does not want to be around anymore. <laughs> and so, Yes, yeah, but that yeah. sounds bad. So he wanted to leave. Yeah, Not, he wanted, he to, wanted to off himself. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> well, oh my goodness, Joe. Um, anyway, he just wanted to go on one last adventure, kind of live his life outside of the Shire like he did in the Hobbit trilogy, you know, that we saw in our previous uh, reviews. So, um, You know, he, there was once a wise wizard who said uh, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. Totally different series, though. Keep going. Um, was that Dumbledore? 
that was Dumbledore. Uh, okay, cool. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Um, but yeah, anyway, everything that Bilbo has um, is going to be given to his nephew, Frodo. And Frodo is obviously, pro- you know, the main main character of this particular trilogy. Um, there's obviously a lot of other people, including the Fellowship we'll get into, but, but Frodo yeah. is going to be the main focus. He's going to be the ring bearer throughout this whole trilogy. Um, and he is going, he is in possession of the ring. And Joe, uh, when Bilbo drops the ring, how, oh. like, like cinematography wise, like how perfect was this? It was beautiful. I mean, unbelievable. The The way that they show the weight of the ring mm-hmm. uh, was perfect because he he drops it, right? He just lets it roll out of his hand. And as it hits the ground, it doesn't ting. It doesn't, like, bounce around. It doesn't roll. It doesn't. It drops. It hits itself on the corner yep. and settles dead. Like, it's literally got the weight of the world in it. Yeah. It is so dense. That it can't help but just settle. Oh, doesn't yeah. bounce, doesn't ring, doesn't anything, just this massive thud. And when you're watching that, you feel and you understand, yeah. oh damn, like this thing's yeah. got some weight to it. Like this, it's not just figurative, it's mm-hmm. literal and figurative. There's a lot going into this. Yeah, ring. which was really cool because the way that they did it too was it drops and it hits this sort of bass tone and it's like it goes through a cathedral. Like there's a huge bass tone echo. And like you said, it does portray almost a personification of the ring. Like I have more power than anything in this world right now. I, and I'm just a, I'm just a little old ring, you know? And obviously, um, there's some weight to it. It gets sent over to Frodo Gandalf does end up investigating the ring and actually does discover for himself that this is the ring of power, the one ring to rule them all. Now, we kind of got a little bit of a foreshadowing to that from the third Hobbit film where Gandalf, Gandalf kind of knows that Bilbo has a ring. He's not, yeah, he you know, definitely suspects something. Yeah. Bilbo does tell him at the end of that movie that, you know, he lost the ring. It wasn't there, but, but I don't think Gandalf is, uh, unwise he's, um yeah he's wise <laughs> yeah he's wise enough to really really know that uh bilbo still had it so now um again 60 years later we're sort of gandalf is like okay this ring is a little bit more important than i was led on to believe and so he does some investigating he does end up going over kind of close to mordor and realizes that Gollum was captured and tortured by sauron's orcs and it is revealed that uh, Ga- that Gollum says, while he is interrogated, two words. He says the word Shire, and he says the word Baggins. So yeah, Gandalf what a is snake, like, man. I, I know. Gives him up like that. I know, right? So Gandalf is all like, I'm gonna get on my horse and I'm gonna get over to Frodo, and we need to we need to get this thing destroyed. Um, so Gandalf Real question, tells, why didn't he just ride an eagle, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep um, going. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you know why? You know why, Joe? I'll give you the exact reason. Because if yeah, you yeah, if yeah. you ride an eagle, you don't get to see the beauty of the Netherlands uh, that or New Zealand rather. Sorry that they Thank are you. Uh, that they are filming in. <laughs> that's my fault. Anyway, uh, that's the reason. Um, Sorry, Kiwis. So um, yeah, Gandalf returns, warns Frodo. Frodo departs with his friend Gardener Samwise Gamgee, and Samwise Gamgee is kind of like brought into this really funnily. Like he's like sneaking around the bush, watering yeah. plants. Wink, wink. Um, yeah, midnight. <laughs> yeah, midnight. Gandalf knows that he's there, and he grabs him through the window, and he's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and it was. Oh, I swear, I wasn't doing nothing, sirs. I wasn't <laughs> dropping no eaves. I wasn't yeah. dropping no. Yeah, that was a great line. Um, so and good. Joe, this is truly the introduction of um, your favorite character in the whole entire series. Samwise Gamgee, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like, I love Sam. I think that. He is incredibly underrated and like he's given definitely his points where he shines and he, mm-hmm. and he kind of, he's the, the one carrying the story almost literally at some point. Uh, but I, I love Sam, uh, mm-hmm. his innocence. He's got the best moral compass. It's always pointed North. Like the dude yeah. does not falter. Uh, he's always got his friends 
uh, mm-hmm. especially Frodo's best interest at heart. He keeps his focus. Like everything about him is is amazing, and yeah. like he is the ideal version of who everyone should wish to be, uh, mm-hmm. because he's just a good person. Yeah. Like at heart, he is a good person, uncorrupted by any of the evil. I love Sam. I couldn't agree more. Um, he's almost too loyal to a fault, um, you know, but at the end of the yeah. day, like he knows that Frodo is going to be on this journey um, and he's going to, he's going to be a part of that journey um, specifically because like he was Bilbo's caretaker in a sense. Like he was, he was he Bilbo's was gardener, like, gardener sure. and, you know, did a bunch of chores around the house. Like, he was very, very well um, regarded among the, yeah, at least this family. Um, and so Frodo and him kind of become best buddies. They're on a road trip. Um, <laughs> it's a, a foot a foot trip. Um, I don't know. I don't know how and you say that. They're roads. They're on a walk. Um, they're on an adventure. <laughs> yes, they're on an adventure uh, to you know, get away from the Shire. Um, And so Gandalf rides to Isengard to meet with the wizard, or Isengard, I'm sorry, to meet meet with the wizard, Saruman, uh, but discovers his alliance is actually with Sauron, uh, who has dispatched his nine undead Nazgul servants to find Frodo. Um, Yeah, so Sauron, like... Joe, Sauron and uh, Gandalf kind of have a fight in his tower. Saruman. Yeah, sorry, Sauron, my bad. Um, and Gandalf have a fight in their in the tower, and and this is this is one of the things that I believe separates this particular trilogy from the Hobbit, is because you see at least within this fight, and we'll get to another instance here in a second, but you see within this fight, sort of the practical effects and c- just kind of like the simplicity that they took to filming certain scenes within uh, this trilogy, and so comment on that a little bit uh you got a wizard's duel like a true epic wizard's duel here uh Saruman the wise versus Gandalf the gray uh they're up in the tower and they've they, they've got the palantir uh which is this black orb uh kind of like a it's crystal like an ball seeing eye yeah but it, you know the dark version of a crystal ball yeah and uh Gandalf rests his hand on it and flash eye of Sauron uh and he realizes at that point, oh no, I think Sauron's been corrupted by evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sure enough, Sauron's been corrupted by Sauron. And uh, he's like, oh, Gandalf, join us, right? You can't mm-hmm. beat him, so just join us, and then we'll rule together. Yeah. And Gandalf's like, yeah, it's not how it works, bro. There's only one <laughs> evil master, and you ain't it. Yeah. Uh, ensue this awesome battle. Uh, staff on staff, right? You got the things, and uh, yeah, it's not like it's not like Harry Potter, and I love Harry Potter, but it's not like Harry Potter. You're not getting these like weird little squiggly laser beams of magic shooting each other. Yeah. You just get them being affected by each other's will. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and awesome duel. Yeah, uh, Gandalf kind of gets it handed to him a little bit. Unfortunately, yeah. Sauron is a, a bit more powerful. Uh, they're they're duking it out, right? Sinodies blast at each other. Gandalf gets knocked on his behind, loses his staff. Yeah. Sauron mm-hmm. ends up with double staffs, and then you got this awesome wire work where he's like yeah. spinning Gandalf around and I know that, throwing him up to the ceiling. And that's what I mean. Like you just notice the sort of practical and simplicity effects that they took with this movie. Um, they didn't, you know, they didn't make. Ian McKellen, you know, that was probably a stunt double, but they didn't make that stunt double like CGI moving around this uh, field. It was it was no. all practical effects, which was really, really cool. Um, and, it, and it works well, too. And- yeah, it works well, too. And speaking of speaking of like practical effects and just like costume design, like these Nazgul servants uh, who are the nine men, the ring uh, race, yeah. the ring kings race, who, the kings of men who had the power uh, of the nine rings there. Um, they are awesome looking. Like they are scary. Um, their costume is so freaky. Um, just like a completely black face with some really sick armor, like around their, around yeah, their they fists look and awesome. stuff. They look so cool. And then when they're chasing and trying to find Frodo, um, because they know, they know now based on what Gollum said that 
the ring is in the Shire. Um, so they're, they know that there's a Baggins who is in possession of this ring. And Frodo, along with Sam and a couple of other fellow hobbits, Merry and Pippin, uh, they are going to be trying to evade these guys. They are on the run. Uh, they evade Nazgul before arriving in Bree. Um, and this is one of the, this is one of those scenes that kind of like um, I have read the Fellowship of the Ring, so this is one of those things that like kind of lifts lifts off the page really well. Um, just like yes. they're they're uh, you know running away from one of the Nazgul servants. Um, getting into the river, uh, going to Bree, like it's just really cool. And they were supposed to meet Gandalf there, uh, yep. but Gandalf's not there. He never arrives, actually. Um, not nah, because he lost his wizard's duel. <laughs> yeah, he was being right? held captive in a tower. <laughs> yeah, should have should have had an expelliarmus uh, for <clears throat> for if that uh, only. staff. If only, yep. Um, so anyway, he's prisoner, uh, but the hobbits do end up um, being aided by none other than uh, baby Strider. Oh wait, no, no, he's not a baby. Uh, old man Strider, <laughs> aka Aragorn. Uh, which you know, if you tuned into our Hobbit stuff, that make a lot more sense. Uh, but yeah, they they run into Strider, who's this strange cloaked figure with his hood up in a dark corner, smoking a pipe, and by the embers of his pipe, his face glows and. What an introduction. Oh, I mean, yeah. 100%. it was so good and it was so good in a creepy way because mm-hmm. on first watch, like I remember watching this for the first time and uh, sitting in theaters, uh, probably way too young to be watching this, by the way, it was 11, um, <laughs> but sitting in the theaters and I was almost 12, let's be fair. Okay, so you're uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost 12. And mm-hmm. I remember his face lighting up and like, I thought he was a bad guy. Like that's, oh, that's yeah. a bad guy mm-hmm. introduction. And that's exactly what I thought I was all. Oh, dang, that's a bad, bad guy. guy introduction. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then, like, you go through this whole scene, and it's fun, fun, fun. You've got the hobbits. There's pints. They're drinking. Mm-hmm. They're having a good time and dancing. They're all merry, pun intended. And uh, then Frodo has this incident where he gets knocked over. The ring, you know, happens to land on his finger. <laughs> he goes invisible. And then as soon as he's visible again... He gets kidnapped, essentially. He just gets snatched, boom, gone. And you're like, I knew he was a bad guy. <laughs> and then he introduces himself, and you understand who he is, and uh, and it's good. And, like, I read the book, and I still felt that, uh, even though I knew who he was on yeah. introduction. Mm-hmm. Like, they did such a good job yeah. uh, with this whole sequence. 100%. Yeah. Introduction of Strider, a.k.a. Aragorn, a.k.a. Yeah. King of Gondor, whatever. Yeah, and that's, Ish. you know, that was a good introduction to him. Um, Sam is, like, he's he's protective of Frodo still, so he just still does not Incredibly. trust uh, Strider. But Strider, um, Aragorn, does promise to escort them to Rivendell, um, which is uh, Elvish Kingdom, um, where Lord Elrond is the uh, king there. And... Unfortunately, they're ambushed by the Nazgul on the weather top, which is this kind of like mountainside. Um, and yeah, it's a mesa. Yeah, yeah. And this was an awesome fight. Um, Strider is nowhere to be seen, which kind of plays into the kind of plays into the you know the theme that Sam is going through. Like he just doesn't trust people that that don't seem to have the best interest in mind yeah. for Frodo and his friends. Um, but Strider does end up eventually showing up, but not before Frodo gets stabbed with a Morgul blade. And Frodo is hurting. Uh, uh, he's he's yeah. not doing good. Not doing stabbed boring. by a, a dark magic poison blade. Yeah. Uh, understandable that he's not doing super great. He's not <laughs> feeling too hot. Uh, so yeah, Aragorn shows up. He starts using the fire because that's the only thing that can repel the Nazgul. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, when he throws the torch and sticks the one in the oh, face. So good. So, so uh, good. Again, and all of this is practical effects. Like, there was no CG in this for the most yes. part. He definitely didn't stick a person in the face, but well, he definitely yeah, did true. stick a torch in the in face of this. <laughs> yeah. you know like it which was, was awesome. Again, it was all practical effects, all really good. Um, you see kind of the the power that Aragorn has with his sword. Like he's very good. Uh, he's a very good sword wielder. Um, oh yeah. And so, yeah, Strider does, um, end up helping Frodo and Miriam and Pippin and Sam in that situation. But Frodo, he's, he's donezo unless 
we get some help. And so Arwen, um, an elf, and Strider's beloved, uh, does locate Stupid Strider and rescues Frodo. Um, and this is potentially my favorite scene in all of the Fellowship of the Ring. Just that chase scene. Um, and, you know, this is something that, uh, unfortunately, we recorded and we lost that recording. But Justin also agreed with, like, this was an awesome scene cinematography-wise because you see, like, you see these nine horses just completely black with completely black, like, covered riders on there. And yeah. they're, they're, they are trying to find this or they're chasing rather this one horse that is white, that is kind of this light amongst the darkness. Um, just a super cool scene. Um, very thematic. The way they did it. Yeah. The yeah. way they did it through the trees. And it's not like a forest of trees. It's sporadic trees. It's, it's spaced well enough apart to where you can see the riders riding through. And they took this awesome aerial shot and you can see them coming in from different <laughs> sides and you've got the the lone horse, uh, Arwen and Frodo out in front, and then the wraiths all kind of just mm-hmm. coming in behind them. A beautiful scene. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. 100%. Um, Arwen does get to the river that uh, is the border of Rivendell. Um, and uh, she does this, like, she does this, like, spell um, that brings yeah. on floodwaters. Yeah. Um, so yeah, brings on a, a you know kind of like a, a stampede of horses uh, are shown within this like flood of water that's going through the river, and kind of drowns out the Nazgul. They're not not dead. Which let's be honest, it was a little um, CG there, <clears throat> well, yeah. but it looked amazing. <clears throat> yeah, it, it looked really good. They did such a good job. Yeah. They might have actually released water and flooded a river, <laughs> but the horses. I don't think yeah, there was real yeah, water sure. horses. But you got to have horses <laughs> when you know that you know it's a fancy. Uh, you know, a little spell. So, yeah. okay. Um, Frodo does end up getting to uh, Eisen, uh, sorry, to uh, Rivendell. Um, yeah, that's all. And uh, he ends up meeting Gandalf. Gandalf did escape Isengard um, on a. That's right. You guessed it. A moth. No, no, that's not right. No, he, he talks to a moth. The moth he gets talk- an eagle. The eagle comes back. He jumps off the tower. You know, free diving. No mm-hmm. parachute, but he is a wizard, so maybe he would have been wizard, fine too. Uh, <laughs> lands on the back of an eagle and takes off. Uh, yeah. it, it was actually cool. It's the one instance where I think the eagles are okay. Yeah. Uh, and Versus all these several instances saga. in The Hobbit. Uh, that just didn't make sense. <laughs> no, they did not. They all did right. not. Um, yeah, so uh, Gandalf is there, Samwise is there, Mary Pippin are there. A lot of people end up showing up here, but that night, uh, Strider reunites with Arwen and they affirm their love for each other, so you got kind of that storyline going. So pointless. Sure. Um, sorry, yeah. I just I think it's a very pointless story. Uh, in this, mm-hmm. we have this epic adventure, and they're like, hey, we're just gonna throw in this little love thing, and you're like, yeah, does that matter? Like, does anyone care about this? Is there anyone <laughs> watching this movie who gives two cents about Arwen and Aragorn? Yeah. I want to see fighting. I want to see magic. I want to see adventure. I want to see friendship. But I don't care about their love story. Get it out of here. No, you would Peter rather Jackson. see fellowship instead of friendship. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That was a terrible transition. But anyway. <laughs> Speaking of fellowship. Um, yeah. Uh, so, facing the threat of both Sauron and Sauron, Arwen's father, Lord Elrond, decides against keeping the ring in Rivendell. He holds a council of elves, men, and dwarves, also attended by Frodo and Gandalf, that decides the ring must be destroyed in the fires of Mount Doom. And so, you kind of get this scene where there's like men, elves there, you know, Legolas is there, uh, Sean Bean's character, Boromir is there, um, you have uh, uh, the dwarf, uh, you have the dwarf Gimli there. Um, Gimli, son of Gloin. Yeah, Gimli, son one? of Gloin. You have this group of people believing that, yeah, that, that the mission should be to destroy this ring. Gimli even tries destroying it with his axe on the spot, and that to no avail, the axe breaks. Did not uh, work. There yeah, was the, one there who uh, who had a Judas moment, uh, mm-hmm. and he wanted to take the ring and use it. Yep. 
uh, even though everyone told him, hey, you can't do that. It's a bad idea. It won't work. Uh, and then he was like, oh, I see it your way now. Yeah. Obviously, we'll destroy the ring. Huh? Uh, yeah. yeah? <laughs> and so uh, with that, um, we're going to take a quick break and we'll get back to the rest of the plot after this. All right. And thanks for taking that quick break with us. And so, um, yeah, they're they are about to set up the fellowship. You have a bunch of people arguing over what should be happening with this ring. As you said, there's sort of like this Judas effect with uh, Boromir. Um, Boromir is, you know, the kind of the leader of Gondor at this time. Um, and he, yes. he believes he that the ring, the steward. yes, he believes that the ring should be in the power of men. Um, and is kind of like, a yeah, well, specifically he, him. <laughs> he thinks that the ring should go to Gondor and then they can use that power to battle yeah. the evil that is, you know, at their gates. Yeah. Uh, he just is not. He, he's a bit ignorant as to yes. what the ring will do, even and, though and certainly it's the corrupted ring everyone. Is, certainly the ring itself is alluring, um, you know, so like it's absolutely it's very, very powerful. And it's already, um, I believe. I believe it is, you know, said in in the movie or probably the book, too, that it just it preys on weak minds. And like Boromir is just like he's just a weak mind. And you just kind of see that uh, with no offense to his character. But yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. He is. uh, He's he's weak minded. Yeah. Yeah. The Um, force would be easily used on him. <laughs> Man, how many uh, different franchises will we mention? <laughs> That's uh, uh, Harry I, Potter. I'm hoping and for at least Star two Wars. More. Okay, two more. We'll try to fit it in. Anyway, um, so these grown men um, are arguing on what to be done with the ring. Um, I believe that there's kind of this consensus that it does need to be destroyed, even though Boromir's like, no, 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 we should still bring it to Gondor um, and let it corrupt us. And. These I say these grown men because by by relation as far as size, Frodo steps up. He's a small man. And he's also young. <laughs> a small Frodo hobbit. is a he young, is young man. Yeah. Comparatively. I mean, we're talking about a group of probably forty something year olds for the humans. Mm-hmm. Uh Gimli's gonna be over a hundred at this point, most likely. Yeah. Uh Legolas is hundreds, if not thousands, of years <laughs> old. We don't know exactly how old he is. Uh, so yeah, then we got Frodo, who's probably twenty something, and uh-huh. uh, and he steps up, steps up, and he volunteers to take the ring to Mount Doom in order to get it destroyed within the fires there. Yeah, and I think there was more yeah. to it, right? He's not just stepping up; he he feels this pull, this call, this mm-hmm. need to be the one to do it. Uh, yeah. And they did a good job showing that in the film because mm-hmm. in the book they you have a lot of description on why he feels this. Yeah. Uh, in the movie, they do a good job showing like his his attachment already to this ring, yeah. uh, even after the short time he's had it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, he feels it's his duty to do that. So yeah. he volunteers. I will well, do I will I take the ring he, to Mordor. I think he also just believes that it, I'm going to use this phrase that it, that it's his birthright, but it, that's not exactly right. But you get what I'm saying. Like this was handed down from Bilbo. Like, and so he kind of has this understanding that this is my weight to bear. Um, and he needs to kind of, you know, volunteer and he feels that way, but, um, he's not going to be alone. He is accompanied by Gandalf, Sam, Mary Pippin, Legolas, Gimli and Boromir, as well as Aragorn, um, who is uh, going to be the, who is uh, not going to be, sorry, well, yes, going to be, but also just, let's talk about this, he is Isildur's heir and the rightful king of Gondor, so um, he it, is. Is, it is revealed at this point. Um, but This is a yeah, beautiful scene, though, because they, cause they I all so. pledge their fealty yeah. to uh, Frodo, right? And if yeah. you don't know what that term means, please look it up. But they all pledge that they're going to do everything they can yeah. uh, in their service to get him through mm-hmm. his quest. Exactly. Uh, and it's such a, a like I said, it's a, it's a beautiful scene because you have everyone stepping up and, and pledging, hey, uh, you have Aragorn, by my life or death, I will do whatever I can to get you through. Legolas, uh, mm-hmm. you have my bow. Gimli, you have my axe. Uh, Bormir steps up 
kind of ish and they all and then you know his friends come in who weren't supposed yeah. to be there but they all run in <laughs> they do don't worry mr um, frodo i'll be there too don't worry then, mr frodo <laughs> yeah uh mary and pip show up and mm-hmm. uh it's it's an like i said i i can't put it any other way it is beautiful uh the way that yeah. they all want to be mm-hmm. there for him they want to help <laughs> him uh truly an inspiring thing it is also learned that Bilbo is now living in Rivendell, and his sword and his chainmail shirt made of mithril um, are with him, and he is going to give it to Frodo for this journey. Um, his sword is none other than Sting uh, from the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good, good trilogy. Um, nope. And the <laughs> uh, but. Uh, at this moment here, uh, he does, Bilbo does end up seeing the ring, um, and it kind of draws him, um, and you see this kind of bad side of Bilbo. Um, he's got a golem moment yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's got a golem moment. So yeah, there's that. That was a cool scene. So the Fellowship of the Ring makes for the Gap of Rohan, um, but discover it is being watched by Saruman's spies. They instead set off over the mountain pass of Caradhras. But Saruman summons a storm that forces them to travel through the mines of Moria. This this scene kind of reminds me of the uh, mountains battling in the uh, first Hobbit. Um, you know, kind of like they're on this mountainside. There's the storm coming. You know, all oh, that. Yeah. Like just pretty epic, to be honest. Like it's an the, epic. The scene. winter storm. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was awesome. Mm. I mean, just just really awesome. All, all, you also get to see how lightweight elves are because Legos can walk on the snow unlike everyone else who's trying to trudge through it. That was really, really fun. cool. Uh, really fun. Just like little moments uh, that you kind of see the power of the elves. Um, so, yeah, they're traveling through the mountaintops. Um, unfortunately, the storm makes it that they have to go through the mines of Moria. Um, and now Moria here um, was a dwarven, uh, you know, mine kingdom, kingdom uh, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of that. You know, it's under the Misty Mountains, which we know the Misty Mountains from, um, you know, the the Hobbit trilogy as well. Um after finding the dwarves of Moria dead, like they are D.E.D. dead. Um, yeah, that yeah. Was sad. Um, you know, what was what was interesting about this is that they walk into, you know, they get to the entrance of Moria and they have to solve a riddle. Um, Frodo kind of helps Gandalf do that, which kind of kind of shows Frodo's like cunning side a little bit. He's not as cunning as Bilbo, I would say, but um, it, it certainly runs in the family a little bit. Yeah, he's got some smarts. Yeah, he's got some sure. smarts. Helps a wizard. I think the, I mean, he helps a wizard yeah. to be to be fair. The lead up to this is important too because the whole time Gimli's like, "Why don't we just go see my cousin Balin? Like, we can go visit him in in the mines of Moria. It's gonna be yeah. fine. Like, mm-hmm. he'll welcome us. It'll exactly. be great and beautiful. He'll we'll have a feast and we'll do all this stuff." And so finally, upon entering, we're expecting like this beautiful dwarven kingdom yeah. and gold everywhere and light mm-hmm. and happiness and fires and feasting, and we're not met with that. We're met with yeah. that giant cra- uh, cractopus outside in the pond. Yes, so there is which a, was wild. there's a kraken uh, basically outside of of the the entrance to Moria. Um, so that was a really cool scene, and I remember this scene in the book, and it kind of you know they kind of hit it the nail on the head too. Like it was absolutely yeah, definitely jumps off the pages. Um, but I love I love Boromir's line um, in this particular scene as well. He says, "This is not." a mine this is a tomb um that's right yeah and it was kind of like an eye-opening for Gimli too as because as you said like he expects full well to be greeted by his dwarven kin you know like this is my cousin's like home you know he's expecting that and unfortunately it is a tomb instead and I forgot was it Balin or Durin what? His cousin. Was it Durin or Balin? I don't, I forget to. Um, go ahead and look that up while I'm reading the synopsis here. Perfect. Um, so the dwarves of Moria are dead. The fellowship is attacked by orcs and a cave troll. So they kind of go into this one room um, where Gimli does see the tomb, uh, the, the gravesite of his cousin. And 
unfortunately, I believe it's Mary. Um, he kind of uh, uh, it's it's took Peregrine took Pippin. Oh, it is Pippin? because he's a okay. he's a fool of a took. <laughs> um, so it is Pippin. Sorry for misspeaking there. He uh, unfortunately uh, plays the fool here, and he. Uh, sp- you know, there is a little bit of a well sort of thing uh, that he throws some skulls down and throws a skeleton down and kind of informs the orcs that the fellowship is within this one room. Um, yeah, and whoops. Now, yeah, whoopsie. Uh, whoopsie. Uh, sorry, that's a Ryan George reference. Um, uh, oh, another universe comes into play. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, anyway, so they're kind of trapped in this particular room. There's an awesome fight scene. The cave troll uh, shows up as well. Um, the one thing that kind of was like, yeah, Frodo should probably be a little bit more injured. Like, the cave troll, like, straight up stabs him with a staff um you know like a a big old staff it's a giant spear and it's a spear it's a troll who's very strong but the mithril armor stone doors yeah the the mithril's the chain armor like stops this troll from damaging him at all i've i've been thinking about it right okay because we we've done this once before inside baseball here for listeners i think what happens is this chainmail mithril armor uh, when it's impacted, I think it 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 gets tighter, and so it actually doesn't compress. And I think that's why he's fine. Okay. Yeah. Regardless, Frodo should be magic. D E D dead. But thank you, Bilbo. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. You know, thank you, and Bilbo. The dwarves from the and original the dwarves. One. Yes, true. it was a gift. True. True. Um, so anyway, awesome fights. Uh, you have Legolas, you know, hopping around doing his own thing with his uh, bow and arrows, and then you, and then what's really cool is that you actually see the hobbits really join in, and they're they're like, you know, Sam's out with a frying pan, like it's great. He's like, he hits a couple orcs, and he's like, I think I'm getting the hang of this, you know, and it's just like Which an is all perfect. out, a very tangled moment right yeah, there. Yeah, an all out war. Uh, the hobbits are down. Um, yeah. Um, but, uh, they defeat everybody, they hold them off, but they are confronted by none other than Durin's Bane. Yes. Which is? A Balrog, uh, residing within the mines. Um, this guy is a beast, and maybe you guys should enter our giveaway in a couple weeks here, because... I'm going to say watching this in 4K and seeing the Balrog and like seeing the set pieces that they have, it was phenomenal. Like get your, if you don't win our giveaway later, just get yourself a 4K set of this and, and be enamored because it is, it is some of the, some of the best visuals that you'll see in a movie, even a movie from 2001. Um, Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. He looks so good. Uh, he's a he's a fire demon, right? For those of you who, who don't know, if you don't know by now and you're still listening, stop listening and watch a movie. But if you don't know, he's a fire demon, and the way they did it, like he looks so clean, yeah. like mm-hmm. unbelievable in 4K. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, but anyway, just uh, going a little bit faster here. While the others escape, Gandalf fends off the Balrog and casts it into a vast chasm. But the Balrog, unfortunately, has a little whip. And he whips Gandalf's legs and drags him down with him into the darkness. He tells the Fellowship to fly, you fools. Um, they are devastated, but they do end up they do end up reaching Lothlorien, which is ruled by the Elf Queen, Elf Queen Galadriel, uh, who privately informs Frodo that only he can complete the quest, and that one of his friends in the Fellowship will try to take the Ring. We kind when of when you say quietly, we mean telepathically. Yes. Yeah. He, yeah, she is talking to him telepathically, which we also learned from the Hobbit, um, the original Hobbit. Yeah. Um, (laughs) it wasn't in the book. (laughs) (laughs) Um, anyway, so Frodo understands this. He understands that there's, there is sort of a quote unquote villain, uh, within the fellowship. There's a Judas. uh, Yeah. And he doesn't know who it is. I mean, it pretty could be anyone. It could be, but also we kind of, as the viewer, know that it's Boromir. Like it's it's pretty clear um, that he still wants the ring for uh, Gondor. 
Um, all of this, uh, meanwhile, Saruman is creating an army of Orukai in in Isengard to find and kill the Fellowship. So he is creating uh, the Urukai. They're they're basically like high end orcs. Like they're they're the they're top of the bigger, line. stronger, smarter <laughs> orcs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they could actually talk, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, uh, they end up going from uh, Lothlorien with gifts in hand. Um, Galadriel does give gifts to kind of everybody there. And the Fellowship travels by river to Parth Galen. Uh, Frodo wanders off and is confronted by Boromir, uh, who does try to take the ring as La- Lady Galadriel had predicted. Uh, but Frodo does use the ring to kind of get away uh, from him. So there's that. The only problem is every time he puts that ring on, it calls the evil to him and shows yep. him where he's at. So he's yeah. like, hey, got away from one bad thing, and <laughs> now all the rest of them are coming. Now another. Um, so yeah, the uh, York High scouts then ambush the Fellowship. Their leader, Lurtz, mortally wounds Boromir as he falls to stop, or as he fails, rather, to stop them from taking Merry and Pippin as prisoners. Aragorn does what a arrive. beautiful redemptive moment, though. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to kind of gloss over that. Um but yeah, I mean, Boromir is definitely redeemed here. Um, it is a very, he, very great scene. Yeah, necessary for a story because yeah. he starts off, has a lot of low points, and this is his, yeah, one big super redemptive like moment in the whole film, a mm. uh, whole trilogy, honestly, and yep. it echoes through into the third movie. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, he gets killed. Aragorn does arrive and kills Lurtz before comforting Boromir as he dies, promising to help the people of Gondor in the coming conflict. And what was really cool about this scene, too, is that not only is it redemptive, but Boromir also sees Aragorn in his final moments, and he recognizes that this is the heir. This is the king. This is the one who is going to be the leader of Gondor going forward. It's only a matter of time. Kind of sets up our thoughts about Aragorn throughout the uh, rest of the trilogy, which is a really cool scene as well. All right. Fearing the ring will corrupt his friends, Frodo decides to travel to Mordor alone. But, Joe, go into this. This is one of your favorite scenes in all the movie. Uh, it is. You have a self sacrificial uh, moment by Frodo saying, I'm not going to endanger anyone else. I'm going to do this myself. Uh, and out of the woods, worried, frantic, uh, runs Sam. And Frodo's already in the river. He's on his boat, headed downstream. And Sam screaming at his best friend, Frodo, Frodo, what are you doing? Come back. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be with you. I want to help you. And uh, Sam just trudges into the river. He can't swim. Doesn't matter. He's still going. He's going to go right in and he's going to walk to the boat. Uh, mind you the boat floats and he doesn't uh, he's got his whole <laughs> sack of pots and pans and he's yelling and he's calling out to Mr. Frodo and don't leave me and from one self-sacrificial moment to another you have Frodo doing everything he can to save everyone from this trip and all the bad that could come from it to Sam giving up his own life to try and get to Frodo so that he can be with him and not be alone on this thing. Uh, And Sam's drowning at this point because he can't (laughs) swim. He's got a pack full of stuff on. Uh, Frodo manages to turn his boat around, paddle over to him, and then heave him out of the water. Uh, And then they move forward as best friends, as Mm -hmm. a team, as an unstoppable duo, as we'll come to find. Uh, And also... Like Frodo could not do this without Sam. No, um, I, heck no. It, like we, it, it we would definitely have ended way sooner. <laughs> we we definitely know if, because we've seen the rest of the trilogy before. But like, yeah, you're totally right. Like Frodo has no chance of doing this on his own, and for him to kind of think that he could certainly is very admirable because he wants to not put his friends in harm's way. Like yeah, those are but his it shows friends. His, naivete right it shows how naive yeah it shows how ignorant he is to his corruptibility the Mm -hmm. power of the ring the journey yet before him 
all of the unknown and he's just like yeah it's cool i can take it and you're like bro yeah you need a you need a helper <laughs> you know and you need samwise because he is he is going to protect frodo he made a promise yep. um spoiler alert i've watched a little bit of the two towers right now before our review as well and like we you see like his um, you see his prowess of protection over Frodo, even within that movie. Um, you yeah. know, and it's it's very prevalent um, and it's very good because Frodo does need it. Um, I, I know you don't like Frodo too much, um, but, you know, as a character, but he's OK. He's he, a, I didn't like his character in the movie so much. In the yeah. book, I loved him. But the way he's mm. portrayed in the movie is very like whiny little brat i know but like also in context of the whole trilogy like i know we might be getting ahead of ourselves but in the context of the whole trilogy like i think that you sort of need that portrayal of frodo at least in the movies because it kind of shows what upon watching a lot of the two towers so far as well as the fellowship of the ring upon rewatch like it just what's really cool is that the fellowship of the ring never stops you know like these these people are in it together for frodo um and i think that the way that they portray frodo within the movies really shows that he does need to depend on the fellowship and the fellowship is actually sort of the focus uh throughout the whole trilogy um and so yeah that's kind of what I like. Um, and speaking of the Fellowship, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, they are set out to rescue Merry and Pippin. Um, these orcs are in trouble. Uh, I'll just be the first one to admit they got an elf on its trail. Uh, they have a ranger who's one of the best hunters in this franchise um, in Aragorn. And then you have Gimli. Like, <laughs> these orcs are kind of in trouble. Gimli, Gimli, the he's going to be... He'll be a little ways back, you know, um, but but still, um, he's not afraid. There. He's yeah. fearless. He's mm-hmm. bred for battle. He's very good in his yeah. own ways. And we learn more about that in the next film. Yeah. So stay tuned. Frodo and Sam, where does their journey take them next? This has been our review of the Fellowship of the Ring. So, Joe, out of five, remember five being amazing, uh, four being great three good two okay one just bad where are you ranking this it's a five it's a very easy five for me uh yeah we'll watch cool. it I, i've already said this several <laughs> times during this episode but if you haven't seen it watch it if you want to re-watch it heck go re-watch it and then come check it out yeah. like mm-hmm. it's so good it's so it's good. worth a rewatch. yeah and if you haven't seen the extended version Please watch that. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, five out of five for me as well. This movie is awesome. It's nigh on perfect. I again, I I think that there are um, some things, especially watching the the extended edition. Like even some of those scenes just don't make sense um, as far as like why are you here? Um, I think the biggest one is th- we didn't touch on it, but like Galadriel and just like her showing her power like that was that was just weird um i'm not going to send that conversation to you because we're running out of time (laughs) um but anyway five out of five for me i love this uh it's going to be hard for me to rank the rest of the trilogy not five out of five i love this trilogy it's one of my favorites and they're done so well so we'll see what our rankings are next time um here is uh justin's ranking before we forget it's a a five uh for (laughs) sure uh five uh, now it's not my favorite of the three it's up there but it's not my favorite uh, and this is the opening bookend of the story that I grew up with both reading and watching and I loved it immensely I think they did a great job translating it I have very very few gripes as we've discussed uh, if not any and I feel like it, it, it cemented that foundation that we needed in this saga All right. Thank you, Justin, for your rating on Fellowship of the Ring. As always, thank you guys so much for joining us on this journey. Uh, We couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you for your support with your listens, uh, with your downloads, all that. We really appreciate you. But 
what could you do more? Um, we hope and pray that you would leave us a review. So leave us a review on Apple iTunes, Spotify Mobile, hit that star rating. Um, if you want to send us a, an email, we haven't talked about this in a while, but if you want to send us an email, uh, we're at what the fun podcast. One. Yeah, what the fun podcast at gmail.com. Uh, so go ahead and check that. Or is it what the fun pod at gmail.com? Who sure, knows? one of those two. It's one of those two. Check it out. It will probably be linked down below in the description. Um, it will be. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. And stay tuned. We are going to be doing a giveaway of the 4K set for the original trilogy digitally. Uh, so stay tuned for that and all of the details concerning that giveaway. For Joe, my name is Mike. This has been our review of The Fellowship of the Ring. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. While I've got you here, everyone, I want to let you know, the Hobbit trilogy is not the original. It's show. Absolute show. Don't watch it. If you do want to watch it, though, only watch the first one. What? Yeah, that was for the audience. Don't worry about it.